a little while ago, I was part of a refugee resource program. I was participating in a, in a lab that helped facilitate job opportunities for the oncoming refugees. We were helping to set up their accounts, and we also had organizations that were there to help the refugees. And among them was a middle-aged white man. We could not find an interpreter for him that day, and we were struggling. I was constantly worry worried, and I was apologizing to him. I was telling him that this is, must be such an inconvenience, this must be so hard for you. And he looked at me and paused and said to me that he does not care about that. He does not care about the inconvenience of the language barrier. What he truly cares about is to make the refugees feel comfortable, to make the refugees feel belonged, and to make the refugees feel that this is their home. And that was such a profound realization for me, because my whole life I have struggled to fit in. I felt like it was my responsibility to defend myself, to defend myself against what is being said about me as a Muslim, against my community, I felt that responsibility right from the beginning. But that day, I fully realized that I don't need to accommodate myself to the world. The world needs to make space for me. And, you know, when I think about Muslim representation and engagement with the Muslim community today, I feel like there are usually three types of it. The first one is a lack of it, a sheer lack of it, a lack of representation and a lack of engagement with, with the Muslim community. We don't see a lot of inspirational Muslim subject, subjects part of our mainstream storytelling and reporting. Secondly, I found that there is misrepresentation misrepresentation that embodies negative stereotypes, um, fear, separation, you know, um, how to somehow being a Muslim makes you incompatible with the rest of the world, or association of Muslims in general with violence and terrorism, you know, the usual classics. And then thirdly, I realized that there is a hint of saviorism. Um, so there is a messaging that almost tells you that in order to fit in, you have to change your beliefs, you have to not be who you are. And, you know, a real life example of this is like when a school teacher decided to pull off a hijab or a headscarf from a young girl because she was offended by it. We need to understand that we are all unique in our identities, and we deserve to have our identities validated. We need to embrace and validate Muslim voices and Muslim presence in all spaces. We have to start there. We need to understand that we need Muslims representing themselves, and we need Muslims thriving in their authenticity. You know, there's a saying that goes like this. If you're not on the table, then you're on the menu. A Harvard psychology professor, Gordon Alport, in 1954, came up with an idea called contact hypothesis. He said that under appropriate conditions, interpersonal contact is the most effective way to reduce prejudice. So by interacting with diverse groups, we learn to understand and appreciate them. This study has been validated by numerous experiments between white people and black people, between financially privileged children and underprivileged children, we need this experiment now more than ever with Muslims and the Muslim community. So where do we start? First, we start with education and inclusion. 
which we start with understanding each other's needs and respecting each other's beliefs. We need to start there. A good example of this is the inclusion of hijab or the headscarf. We see major brands like Nike um, embracing hijab in their apparel lines. We see sport federations lifting bans on hijabs, but there is work that still has to be done. As hijabi Muslim women today continue to fight for their right to express themselves, and for the right to pursue education and employment while wearing the hijab. Secondly, we need collaboration. We need to collaborate with each other. We need collaboration that drives progress, that drives change, collaboration that creates value and opportunity for each other, for each other's benefit. A good example of this is how interfaith organizations are coming together in states like Colorado, Utah, California to collaborate and to create job opportunities for oncoming refugees. Thirdly, we need mediums and platforms supporting Muslim voices. And TED is a prime example of that as I stand today and talk to all of you. An example of this is also from my personal life. I started a podcast last year called Impact Club, where I decided that there is a dearth of inspiration in my life. I need to talk to Muslim women who are making a difference. And I spoke to Muslim women that have changed my life. I spoke to a woman who is working on rep representing Muslim children in storybooks, a woman scientist who is thriving, minority women who are thriving in tech industry, women entrepreneurs helping other women entrepreneurs. It was, it was amazing, and I needed that. And I know Muslims around the world need that too. And so does the rest of the world. So what I ask you to do today is to encourage your communities, your platforms, your mediums, to include Muslim voices, to make space for Muslim presence, collaborate with each other to benefit each other, to drive value, to drive opportunity, because let's stand together and share in that which benefits us, rewards us, unites us, rather than that which divides us. Thank you.